What's up everyone, I'm Nick, and so far in this course, we've built the majority of our app. Our app is totally working, but you might have noticed that it doesn't actually save any of our data. So if we close the app and reopen the app, it doesn't save any of those new to-do items that we added. So in this video, really quickly, we're just going to incorporate user defaults so that we can save our to-do list items so that they persist and save between sessions. All right, so I'm back in our project. And so far in this course, we have done the bulk of the code, the bulk of the app. We have our app, we have our screens, we can add items to our app. We can delete items, we can toggle their completion. Uh, but one thing you might have noticed is that if we edit this list and we close the app and then reopen the app, it defaults back to the starting state. And right now it has that those three item models that we create on the init when we call get items. And all of the work that we just did adding updating items is not saving. And that's because we haven't saved it anywhere and we're not persisting the data. So we need a place to save our items array when we change it, when we update it. Now, if this was an app that I was putting in the app store, I would probably use core data to do this, but I haven't covered core data in the Swift UI bootcamp. So even simpler than core data, we're just going to use user defaults. And before we get into it, I want to quickly note that user defaults should predominantly be used for smaller pieces of data. So something like a user ID or your current user's name. But in this case, our item model is fairly small pieces of data. It is just a title and a Boolean. And we only have a couple item models. We don't have like thousands or a hundred thousand different items in our to-do list. So it's not a big deal that we're using user defaults. But if we had a larger database, I just want you guys to be aware that user defaults should really be used for smaller pieces of information and it do not start incorporating large data sets into user defaults. But with that said, user defaults is very easy to use and it is perfect for what we're going to do here. So we're going to create a new function at the bottom of our list view model. So I'm in the list view model. I'm going to go down to the bottom. And after update item, I'm going to add func save items, open close parentheses and open the brackets. And I did a whole video in the Swift UI bootcamp on app storage. And you might be wondering why we're not using app storage in right now. And that's because we are in a class and app storage should be used if you're going to use it in the view directly. But since we're in a class, it's better to use user defaults. So we're going to call user default dot standard dot set. And if we look at these value types here that we can add, you'll notice that none of them clearly say item model. And that's because user defaults has no idea what an item model is. And we can't actually save an item model into user defaults. So I'm going to delete this quickly. And what we're going to do is basically convert all of these item models into JSON data. So if you have been a developer, maybe like a web developer or something, you're probably familiar with JSON data It's basically just a data blob and it's going to take our item model. It's going to convert it into this data blob. We're going to put that data into user defaults. And then when we retrieve it, we're just going to convert it back from the data to item models. So to do that, we're going to jump into the item model. I'm going to jump to definition. And all we have to do is make this conform to codable. So I'll do comma space codable. And in the next series, I'm going to do a whole video on codable because there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. And this is super powerful. But all you need to know is that because item model is now conforming to codable, we can decode and encode this item. So we can transform an item model into uh, basically into data and then out of data. So now that it's conformed to codable, well, let's go back to our save items. And we're going to take this items array here, which is an array of item model, and try to encode it into data. So very simply, we'll say if let uh, encoded data equals try with a question mark. We're going to create a JSON encoder with an open and close parentheses 
And then on this encoder, we're gonna call dot encode. And what do we want to encode here? We wanna encode our items array. Then we're gonna open the brackets because this is an if let statement. We have to use this try method for the JSON encoder. And that basically is just going to try to do this. And it's possible that it might fail, but that's okay. And that's why we're in this if let statement. So if this is successful, we would have created a JSON encoder, which, which can convert things into JSON data. And then we're gonna encode our items. So our items array is gonna convert from an items array into JSON data. And that's what this encoded data is. And we're just gonna put this encoded data into our user defaults. So we'll call user defaults dot standard dot set. We'll go down to the value with any, and we're gonna include our encoded data and for key. And now we need a key for the user defaults. And I'm just gonna call this items underscore list. Now we're gonna to have to reference this key again when we wanna pull the data back from user defaults. So I don't like that we're typing it in here directly because if we later have to have to refer to this key and maybe we mistype it or we forget what we put here, it could run into issues. So I'm gonna make this key a standalone variable. So at the top, underneath our items, let's call let items key of type string and we'll set it equal to items underscore list. We're gonna take this items key and we're gonna put it down here as our for key. Now we have our function to save items. It's gonna convert our items array into data and then put that data into user defaults. And all we have to do now is actually call save items from somewhere in our code. And I wanna make sure that these user defaults are is always updated and in line with what's going on in our list. So if we delete an item, I wanna call save item. If we move an item, if we add an item, if we update an item, I always wanna call save items. So I could go and add this to the end of all of these functions and that would work. But I'm gonna undo this. And what's, what we're really doing here is anytime we change this items array, so we're changing it in all of these functions, anytime we change this items array, we wanna call save items. So an even more efficient way than adding it into each of these functions, we're gonna scroll up to the items array here and we're gonna add a computed property. So at the end of this, I'm just gonna open the brackets and then I'm gonna use a Swift function called did set and open the brackets. And basically this did set gets called anytime we set this items array. So anytime we change this items array, this function will get called. And I'm just gonna call in here, save items. It's that simple. So if we do anything that affects this items array, which includes deleting, moving, adding, updating, we're always gonna call save items, which is perfect. And the last thing we need to do here is get items, because instead of always getting these three fake items, we actually wanna take the items that are saved in user default and then append those items. So I'm going to highlight all these lines, press the command and backslash to comment them out because we don't need them anymore. And let's try to get the items from our user defaults. So first we need to get the data from user defaults. So we'll say let data equals user defaults dot standard dot data for key. And we already have our key here because we created a constant. So we'll add in items key. And if we hold the option button and click on data, you'll see that it is optional because there is a chance that there is nothing saved at this key. Uh, so what we need to do is safely unwrap this. So instead of just let data, let's say guard let data equals this, else open brackets and return. So it's gonna try to get the data from this key here. And if it's true, it's gonna run the rest of this code. If it's false, it's gonna return out of this function. And that's because we need this data to move forward. And then next we need to convert this data from a data JSON blob into our array of item models. So what we're gonna do is basically the opposite of what we did down here with our if let statement. 
Here we took the JSON encoder and encoded the items, and now we're gonna decode with a JSON decoder from the data back to items. So we'll say let saved items equal try the question mark json decoder open close parentheses dot decode from and we need to now tell it what kind of data type we want to decode it to so that's what this decodable dot protocol is and we made our item model conform to codable before so we can use item models here but we know this saved items is an array of item models so we'll do array of item model and we want it to be the type of this, so not an actual array. So we'll do dot self. And then from data is our data that we just got right here. So we'll do data. If I hold the option button and click on saved items, you'll see that it now gives us an optional array of item model. So again, this is optional. I want to make sure that we do have items. So we can add another guard let else return and what's kind of cool about these guard statements is that we can actually combine multiple multiple of them so in this first one we're checking that we have data and then the second one we're checking that we can convert that data into items but we can actually just combine both of these statements so what I'm going to do is press enter before this let and press enter before this else so first we're gonna say guard let data equals this, comma, and then I'm gonna copy our let saved items equals this and paste it in here. So now this guard statement actually has both of these combined and we can delete the second one. So guard let data equals this, let saved items equals this, and we'll return out of the function if we can't get the data or the items. But if we get both, we will continue down here. And now, if we hold the option button and click on saved items, it is not optional. It is an actual array of item model. So we can call self.items equals saved items. And now our items array will be updated with that saved data. I'm going to delete this because we don't need it anymore. You can leave it in your code if you want. And let's click play on the simulator and see if it works. All right, so right now we have nothing in our screen. And that's because we're not appending those three fake items anymore. So let's start adding some items. We're going to add, let's do my first item, save. Bounces back. Let's add another second item save. I'm going to make this first item completed and then I'm going to edit them and make the first item actually second. Press done and now let's close the app and open it up again. And now we can see that our items have actually saved and persisted because every time we edit these items we saved them to user defaults and when we open our app we are fetching the saved data from user defaults and putting it back in our app. So I hope this wasn't too confusing. You guys don't have to worry too much about if this try decoder decode, it looks confusing. All we're doing is converting an array of item model to JSON data and then back from JSON data. And I wanted to give you guys some practice here with guard let statements as well as if let statements because anytime we use if let or guard let, they're kind of interchangeable. So we could have used a guard statement here uh, and we also could have used an if let statement here. But now you guys have practice with both of them and our code is looking so efficient, so clean. I hope you guys are getting excited. We are almost done with this app. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you're learning something, if you're enjoying this course. And uh, stay excited and I will see you all in the next video.